How do we just... Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Before you come to that. What do you make of uh, the evidence of uh, accused two? that Mjiyako was not his attorney. Actually, there was some vacillation from Mr. Gomez Zuru and Mr. Rapesele. Uh, Ra there was no acknowledgement initially that Mjiyako yes. was present. Okay. Indeed, that's, Maroji. That's the impression I got. It was actually denied that yeah. he was present initially. That's it, initially. Yes. Fine. Subsequently, OK, because it appears everybody saw this gentleman in a suit. Jonathan Mukhani and, and, and the, the, the interpreter. That's it. Yes. Even Mr. Lissering, apparently. Yes. Anyway, what do you make of a, an attorney like me, who is defending accused number two, and he tells me that Giaco uh, was not acting on his behalf? What and here you? we go again. Judge Rata giving hypothetical scenarios when his actual focus should be on the evidence presented to him as opposed to him creating all these hypothetical scenarios. And in my head, I'm wondering, so is he seeking help in reaching a judgment or is he seeking clarity? What are your thoughts on this so far? Because it was, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what that, tactic is called or what he's trying to do and if it does portray him as being fair and unbiased when he is asking those questions comment below let me know don't forget to like this video let's continue with the rest of the video because i promise you it gets even more interesting what would you do if you get the instructions well to start with uh, one would have expected <coughs> so i choose number two to actively dissociate himself from from Mr. Mjiyako to tell the magistrate that this is not my uh, legal representative. I've got nothing to do with him. May he please be excused from the room. But in fact, he's pertinently asked by Ms. Cronier if he was his legal representative. He confirms to Ms. Cronier that it's indeed his legal representative. And Sergeant Mohane also testified that earlier, even before they went into the office, he asked uh, the, uh, he asked accused number two who the gentleman was and he confirmed that he was his legal representative. So, my lord, everything points to the fact that the um, accused did mention that Mr. Mjiyako was his legal representative. And this is confirmed by subsequent events. Um, on the 27th of October 2020, when the accused appeared in the Boxback Magistrate Court for the first time, Mr. Mjiyako is there. So, it's not as if my lord, uh, he only appeared on the 24th uh, of June 2020 when he appeared in court um, several months later on the 27th of October 2020 at the Boxback Magistrate Court, Mr. Mjiyako is there. Um, and he also confirms on record, the magistrate asks him if he's appearing for case number two, um, he confirms that indeed he, he appears for case number two and case number two confirms that um, he doesn't dissociate himself from uh, from Mr. Mjiyako. Okay. And we must also remember on the 23rd of uh, June 2020 at Pretoria Mort Police Station, Brigadier Genina testified that he was called to the police station to say that there's this gentleman who wants to see uh, accused number two. He then went there and uh, accused number two once again confirmed that, uh, in, in fact, according to Brigadier Genina, he's the one who introduced um, accused, who had introduced Mr. Mjiyako as his legal representative. and. Mr. Mjiyako then handed a document to Brigadier Gininda, which serves as Exhibit YY. It's a letter from the Legal Practice Council dated 5 May 2020, confirming the enrollment of Mr. Dominic Ntokozo Mjiyako as a legal practitioner. Now, the question is, where would Brigadier Gininda have received Exhibit YY mm -hmm. if it wasn't from Mr. Njiako um, on the 23rd of June 2020 at Pretoria um, Mort Police Station. And, my lord, once again, it is inconceivable that the magistrate will come and tell this court that there was this gentleman in a suit in the office. The gentleman introduced himself as Njiako uh, representing uh, accused number two if that was not the case. She even noted the uh, Fidelity Fund yeah. certificate uh, okay. on, the, on, on, on Exhibit JJ. You know me, maybe 
it's an abrupt response. Would you say it's the conduct of a, of a diligent attorney who fiercely defends his client's rights where this issue of Mjiako masquerading, according to accused number two, version, as the legal representative of accused number two, why would a diligent attorney who's competent not report that Mr. Mjiako to the LPC? Well, and actually further, reporting to the South African police because yes. he's committing a fraud. Yes, indeed, my lord. <coughs> One would have expected that to happen. Um, but as we pointed out, even subsequent events um, at the Boxback Magistrate Court where he was present confirm indeed that um, he was his uh, legal representative. Okay. Th then briefly, my lord. On, on Once again, I bring into question the conduct of Judge Rutter and what appears to be a biased um, courtroom decorum, allegedly. So we do hear how Valoy describes a man in a suit coming to represent accused number two, Wongani Danzi, who Wongani Danzi claims is not his lawyer and he never represented him. He does not know him. And that is brought into question in the trial within a trial. And Judge Rata gives this hypothetical scenario, which again, for me, brings up the question of why is he doing this? And he's conducting this question with the state, thereby showing allegedly his bias towards the state. So it's generally not appropriate for a judge to make statements about the conduct of attorneys in front of everybody because it will be perceived as biased however judges are expected to remain impartial and refrain from making comments that could influence the perception of um, that could influence his his perception however if there are concerns about an attorney's behavior they can certainly be addressed in the proper channels outside the courtroom please do go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on judge rata and this hypothetical scenario again that he draws up with regards to the mysterious lawyer does this create another dent for the defense will this impact the verdict of a trial within a trial has judge that has judge rata given us clues on what he's going to rule in this trial within a trial that's it from us today thanks so much for watching remember to like this video because i absolutely love it comment and subscribe to this channel catch you on our next upload